Shivaya, Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om. Namaste. And welcome to our series on the Brahma Sutras. Just say the word, Brahma Sutras, and watch everybody flinch. <laughs> the easiest way to win any argument about Vedic thought is to quote the Brahma Sutras. Why? Because nobody reads them. Even the so-called Neo-Edwaitans, huh? they claim to know all about Brahman, but they don't study Vedanta or Brahma Sutra. Why? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with being lost. Brahma Sutra is a vast landscape of transcendental knowledge. And it's easy to get lost. It's easy to lose the thread. It's easy to get uh, off into a rabbit hole. <laughs> Why? Because Brahma Sutra is based on the Upanishads. Not all the Upanishads, the most important 10 or 12 Upanishads only. But hey, that's enough. I mean, we're already talking about at least 2,000 pages of dense Sanskrit literature and commentaries. Now, Sripad Adi Shankaracharya was the first commentator on the Brahma Sutras. And he was not only the first, but he's the one to beat. Because his commentary is so well integrated with the original intentions of Vyasadeva in compiling the Brahma Sutra, it's as if they were written by the same hand. And maybe they were. <laughs> because Shankara's commentary is so intuitive and so clear and illuminates the missing information in the sutras themselves, because the sutras are highly compressed, laconic, points to remember in the dialogue between the Vedantists and the various challengers who come and try to defeat them. That's the background. That's the context. Vedanta Sutra is where you can look up the answer to any challenge to Kevala Dvaita, pure non-duality philosophy. So, to have a map, to have a reference, to have an architectural guide is extremely valuable. That way you don't get lost in the complexity and the vastness of the Brahma Sutras, and you can also look up the different topics, adhikaranas, and go right to them and read them. And so this video is part of a whole package. It's the first video in the Brahma Sutra series. So, naturally, it has a whole map of the Brahma Sutra themselves. Brahma Sutrani is the proper name. The Brahma Sutras. And not only that, it comes with the original files. If you look down in the video description, you'll see links going to my archive that have the original files, the edition translated by Gambhir Ananda, which is more difficult than other versions, but on the other hand, it's more detailed and more true to the original, which I value very much. It also has a link to the liquid text software. Liquid Text is a fantastic software to research and to organize and take notes on any kind of uh, documents, especially PDFs that are usually difficult to work with. And there's more. <laughs> there's a file 
a liquid text project, which is the marked up version of the uh, Gambhirananda edition of Brahma Sutras that you see in the background of all these videos. So this is a whole package that you can use to study Brahma Sutras and to use them as a reference to solve any question in Vedic philosophy. So if you're serious about wanting to get to the bottom of all this, to understand what the Vedas really say about innumerable topics, this is the place to start. This will give you the ability to search any kind of a file about the Brahma Sutras and come up with some kind of a conversation about that topic. Let's take the highest level overview of the Brahma Sutras. The Brahma Sutrani are 555 short pithy aphorisms divided into four adhyayas or chapters. And each chapter, each adhyaya is divided into four padas, sections. Pada literally means feet. And within each pada, there are several adhikaranas, or topics. That is the highest level view. So what we have in Sri Brahma Sutrani are the four adhyasas, or chapters, Samanvaya, Aviroda, Sadhana, and Phala. Samanvaya means reconciliation. Aviroda means consistency. Sadhana, of course, means the practice, and phala means the results. And, of course, each one of these is divided into four padas. What's in those padas? Glad you asked. <laughs> First, let's take a look at the syntax of a title or reference in Brahma Sutra. Let's say we have a reference to Brahma Sutra 1, 2, 3, 4. The meaning is Adhyaya 1, Pada 2, Adhikarana 3, and Sutra, or Part 4. And what are these topics? Well, here they all are. And if you want to go even deeper, following this, we have a detailed listing of the Adhikaranas in each Pada. All 237 of them. <laughs> So, you can download all this from the links below in the description. Now, why would you want to do that? So that you don't get confused. So that you can see where you're going and know where to find the answer to any question in the Brahma Sutras. So, this is how we're going to uh, use the nomenclature in this whole series. The Adhyayas broken up into the Padas, which are broken up into the Adhikaranas, which are broken up into Sutras. And this is the standard that we're going to follow in what I anticipate to be an extensive series on this most important Vedic literature, Sri Brahma Sutrani. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.